Good morning, my name is Chris Fox, and today we're talking about dealing with burnout, which is something I feel every author faces, even if you haven't published. You know, I know many, many writers who you get excited about your book and you get, you know, two thirds of the way through the writing and you're just exhausted and burnt out and, and you don't know where to go next. And, and maybe there's a gap in the, the plot and, you know, you're exhausted. Or maybe you're a working writer like me where you're putting out novels very frequently and you've been writing in a genre for a while and you're just exhausted and burnt out and, and you're not sure what you're going to do for your next series. What do you do when you reach that point? When you're at a point where you are exhausted mentally and maybe even physically and you're just struggling to create or to produce. And I think a lot of people know this state intimately. Like It's that state of mental exhaustion where the idea of creating is hard. And you can force yourself to sit down and you can toil, but it's not the same as when you're excited and you're sitting down and cranking out words that you love. You know, Rachel Aaron talks about this a lot in 2K to 10K. You want to be excited about what you're writing. And so here is my secret for dealing with burnout. And it's actually been working surprisingly well this year. We're halfway through the year. It's a record year for me in every way financially, like I was hoping it would be. Making the switch to focusing on, on business proved to be very fruitful in that way. But there was a huge cost and, and you guys can see it. Like you look at these videos and I'm like, holy crap, I look tired at some of these videos because I am tired <laughs> because I'm working really, really hard. And, and so I do worry about burnout. And, and what I'm doing is structuring my life in such a way so that I can give myself recovery periods. It's just like when you're working out. If you go to the gym and you work, you know, 12 hours a day lifting weights and you show up the next day and you try to do another 12 hours of those same weights, your body's going to be like, uh, no, dude, that's not happening. You you overtrain. And, and the same is true, I think, for creative endeavors. So what I've learned to do is pace myself where I worked really really hard to write and edit God's War. And it's the fastest I've ever done a book. And I was hypersensitive to the quality of that book. So I, I couldn't let anything slide. And I had to get it done in a record time. And it was very, very difficult. But I got it done. Now, now I'm in the aftermath of that. You know, I'm, I'm waiting for the book to come back from beta readers. I won't actually touch it again until Monday, which means until Monday, I basically am off. And I can't start a new project because that's not enough time. So what I'm doing in the meantime is just business stuff. I've got, you know, 8,000 emails to get through. I'm, you know, I'm making some tweaks to the course and responding to students and I'm scheduling my office hours for them and, you know, taking care of those business related tasks. But that's easy stuff. That's the softball stuff where I can knock something out in 10 minutes and be able to check something off a list and it feels good. It's, it's not the same as production. And production is where we're writing the words. And you guys all know how hard that can be. For some of us, editing is also production. I, I would count it as production. Some people argue otherwise. But I would say both your writing and your editing are production. And production is hard. So I'm trying to build in more slow time, more business time, more non-production time to deal with burnout, to combat it. So when I finish a major project, I take a week now and I try to do nothing overly strenuous and just recover mentally. And if I can afford the time, play some video games or, or binge a series on Netflix or, you know, pick an audiobook off the top of the pile I've been waiting to get to and then just, you know, go go find a mountain and climb it <laughs> while listening to that book. I'm trying to build that stuff in and I haven't been doing it enough this year and I can see the toll that it's taking. Like you sort of have this mental debt that builds up and eventually when that mental debt is too much, you burn out. And, and I can see that meter there and mine's been slowly filling all year. So it's been great financially, but I'm also cognizant of the cost. And so as I'm structuring the second half of my year, I'm making sure not to schedule too many deadlines around conferences and, you know, not to put out quite as many books in the second half of the year as I did in the first half of the year, because I know I'm going to need that time mentally to recover. I'm basically trying to balance my schedule a little bit better. So if you are someone that is combating burnout and is trying to find a good methodology for dealing with it, I would say your number one tool is awareness. Be aware that you're burning out. See that it is happening and then come up with a game plan. And your game plan may look different than, than other people's. But the first thing I do is make a deal with myself. I say, okay, self, I need to finish X milestone. I have to finish God's War by this date. It's going to be hard. It's going to suck. I don't want to do it. I'm going to dig deep and I'm going to make it happen. And after I've done that, though, I've got to reward myself with the, okay, Chris, you've got four days off now, only deal with emergencies. So if a fire crops up that you have to deal with, then deal with it. But otherwise, this is kind of semi-vacation mode and, you know, take some time. And 
the first day of that, man, I couldn't get anything done. I had all these grandiose plans of stuff I was going to do and little projects I was going to get done. And man, nothing happened. I, you know, I spent the day watching Netflix documentaries and drooling on myself. So I'm, I'm, I'm paying the piper. I'm giving Chris, I guess, the recovery time that, that author Chris needs so that I can put the next book out. And this does mean that I write a little more slowly. It does mean that I'm not producing as quickly as I once did. I still, you know, hit some pretty big milestones and I'm still getting books out fast and, and I'm still producing at a rate that I'm happy with. But I've had to find that balance because if I push myself too far beyond the limits that I've imposed on myself, I will burn out. And if I do burn out, in my experience, like I can't afford another six month period where I'm just struggling to get books out. So it's much easier for me to micromanage the burnout, look at that kind of meter that's building up over time and, and start, you know, kind of bleeding off the stress that's accumulating. Finish a milestone and then force yourself to take a break where, you know, you know, there's going to be consequences. There always are. There's a cost to any vacation or time that you take to yourself. But if you're not taking care of yourself, you're going to burn out. You're going to learn to hate this thing that you once loved. And that can't easily be undone. It really can't. So take care of yourself, be aware of your mental state and kind of how you're doing with things. And, and if you feel like you're creeping up towards an edge or you are starting to burn out, then take a step back and look at how you can approach that. And, and what can you do so that you're not abandoning whatever it is that you're working on and you're not just doing some drastic action, but you are taking a measured approach to removing some work off your plate and, and getting to a, a meadow where you can frolic for a little bit mentally, if, if you will. You know, go to your tortoise enclosure, as, as John Cleese would say. Anyway, I, I hope that's a little bit helpful. I would love to hear more about the ways that you guys combat burnout in the comments. If you are a veteran author and have had to deal with this for a long time, I know we had somebody post who said they were a ghostwriter. And it sounds like, you know, 10,000 words a day is common. Like, how do you deal with burnout is what is working for you. I've heard a number of different solutions, but I think awareness of all the different solutions is what will benefit us the most. So I'm going to keep taking care of myself. I cannot afford to really slow down too much at this point, but I also feel like six months into a tough year, I've, I've found a way to balance it somewhat. So it's hard and it does take a toll, but you know, the rewards have been really amazing too. Anyway, guys, I do need to get back to the writing. In this case, I'm plotting Burt, not because it's like, oh, I got to get this deadline dealt with and I need to deal with this and holy, holy crap, I've got a pre-order. I need to get back to the writing because I want to write the sequel to Burt. I'm excited about it. Anyway, guys, I'll see you next week.